So I'm going to walk through the Council of the North using the marks of mission. I'm sure some of you have heard about that. The General Synod back in 2010 decided that they would uh, take on the marks of mission as part of Vision 2019. And so I thought it would be good to just walk through the Council on our work using the marks of mission. So the first mark of mission is to proclaim the good news of the kingdom. And like you, we do that. We gather for worship, we talk about Jesus, we share the stories of faith together, we meet in Bible study, uh, we visit the sick, you know, do all, do all that kind of stuff. So I'll just give you a little explanation about a couple of these pictures. Down, down at the bottom there is Bishop Cy Pittman of Eastern Newfoundland and Labrador, and he's ordaining a deacon for one of the outlying parishes in the Archdeaconry of Labrador, one of the non-stipendary clergy that you'll hear about. Up at the top is Adam Halkett. He's the diocesan archdeacon for Saskatchewan, and he is a non-stipendary priest. He's First Nations uh, Cree, and he does not get paid for the ministry that he does for the Diocese of Saskatchewan. Up at the top there is Bishop Lydia Mamakwa. I'm going to talk a little bit more about her. She's our first area mission bishop for Northern Ontario. She's an impressive woman. <laughs> And down at the bottom there is a Palm Sunday walk in the Diocese of Yukon and Whitehorse a few years ago with uh, Bishop Terry Buckle, who's their former bishop. It's cold when they do Palm Sunday walks. <laughs> the second mark of mission is to teach, baptize, and nurture new believers. We're young. We're really young. We are, have some of our communities where 50% uh, of the population is 18 or younger. So we are a very young church, we are, uh, which is significantly different from the church that's in the south. We have a lot of kids, we have a lot of confirmation programs, um, we have a lot of baptisms that happen. Uh, I know a couple of the bishops who've gone to communities and confirmed anywhere from 50 to 150 people in one day. Can you imagine Bishop John back confirming that many people in one day and still having a feast afterwards? <laughs> and being able to stand up and shake everybody's hand. Yes. yes. <laughs> kind of wild, but it happens in our, in our diocese. Okay. <laughs> Isn't she lovely? So uh, one of the responses we had to this is that in 2008, the Diocese of Kuwait developed a program called the Virtual Church School Project, where we put up online uh, free Sunday school lessons using the uh, Revised Common Lectionary. And, um, and uh, within six weeks of starting that project, I got an email, because I'm the person that writes it, just so you know. I got an email from a lay reader in the Diocese of Montreal, and who's a francophone there, and he said, Fiona, we don't have any good materials in French for Sunday school. He said, I'm willing to translate this for free as a gift to the council and to the rest of the church. <laughs> Partnerships like that, you go, thank you very much. <laughs> Anyway, so it was taken over as a council project in 2009. That's when I started working full-time for the council. Um, and it's available on the National Church website for free download. And it is a gift from the council to the rest of the church. So if you're no small city schools or struggling, send them this way. One of the other big things we do is vacation Bible schools. Um, many of the dioceses sponsor them across the, across the north. We have a partnership with On Eagle's Wings. On Eagle's Wings is a Canadian, is Anglican, Lutheran, and Roman Catholic uh, ecumenical organization that works out of Edmonton. They hire pilots who then take people as resource people and materials to northern communities that can't can't develop the mean, don't have the means to develop that for themselves, um, and do wonderful vacation Bible school programs. And both of those pictures are from a couple of those programs. I have a brochure about this. So we, we've invited people to think about Christian education partnerships with us in terms of, so this is answering some of that question where the gift money might end up going, right? <laughs> to help sponsor a vacation Bible school, to support the virtual church school project, um, and, or to support a local Sunday school by sending a box of supplies to them. I'm gonna get into a little bit about cost of living in a little while, but you'll understand that even getting basic supplies like construction paper and scissors and glue and you know, all the things that Sunday schools need to function, to do crafts with their kids, is expensive. Because if you've gotta fly the materials up, it's, gonna, it's not gonna be cheap. It's actually cheaper to buy them here and mail them than it is to 
get them in your own community. They don't come into the communities anyways because they're not considered to be necessities of life, right? 